New Evolve DLC on the way, Mary, just around the corner. Pretty excited, Chris. Four new hunters, one new monster. Let's run them down, talk about what's cool, what's maybe not so cool, and let's. are we starting with the bug guy? Yeah, well, I mean, we have to start with the, the craziest thing that happened, which is there's a, there's a bug man. There's a bug man, and not only is he a bug man, but he has a bug friend. He does. It's like his little healing drone. It heals like one person on the team. It's pretty useful, but not really in combat because the monster actually can kill it. Because you can send the healing drone to revive a down survivor and you go to the other one. Boom, they're back. But that's his like secondary method of healing. His first is actually the healing burst, the thing that every medic has, but there's a twist. There's a leech gun in this one, so he's actually a damage dealing medic. He's the first damage dealing medic. His goal is to do damage. The more damage he does, it leeches, it goes into his healing burst. Three shots on the monster, you get to heal burst. It's incredible. Like it really encourages you to be in the mix and landing shots on the monster. Like perching on the side is not really the best tactic with Slim because you want to be landing shots and it has the biggest radius of any medic's heal burst. And if you're in there and doing it, like you're that's how you're gonna keep your team alive. Yep. And he's also got a spore cloud gun. Helps when you're in the mix chewing things up, which is what Slim is meant to do. We also got Crow. Uh, he's a freaky little looking guy. He's got those sweet goggles, like give him one more light and he's practically like Sam Fisher. He's the trapper. Uh, he looks like one of these tracker guys who's out in the wilderness for like ages and he made friends with a bat ray. He looks like a Mongolian man for some reason to me, and he does. He has a pet named Gobi. Yeah, that falconry connection. He's sweet. He's got, yeah, he's got like a little suit on. He looks great. Um, Gobi is not like Daisy. It is not a fifth player. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't revive or anything like that, but he's pretty sweet. You just send him out in a direction, and he highlights anything below him, any animals and the monster. But his real interesting trick is his two guns they both function differently if you just fire them or if you hold down and charge the shot. That's correct. He's got a rifle that obviously just does quick hits, but if you hold it down, it pierces through the monster's armor into direct damage, which is pretty clutch if you think about it. It's crazy. I mean, you can have a monster that's rolled away, shielded up, but still doesn't have a lot of health. You don't have to chew through all that shield. You just have to have Crow popping in with those charged shots. The other gun that he has is a real uh, mobility control kind of thing. It's a stasis gun uh, that's it does has the same kind of effect as the stasis grenades, uh, but you fire it at the monster, short bursts, slows down a little bit, but that big long burst, and you'll slow it down for like a serious amount of time. And he's obviously got the mobile arena. Dude, the stasis is like the most annoying thing as a monster. I hate it so much. I hate it! Also, we got Sunny, who has a pretty new type of mobility help. It's uh, a boost gun that kind of helps your jetpack, and it kind of refuels it immediately, but also sends you flying. Yeah, Sunny's the support, and so if you're if she's zapping you with that like pink Ghostbuster beam, then your jetpack is going to be supercharged. Your double your de jetpack dash is super effective, so it's like the. Will you just get over here already, Beam? She also has a uh, robot shield. You just kind of just send it out, and it's, it stays where you put it, and then it shields the last person the monster hit. Yeah, it's a little drone, so it, it basically, what does that force the monster to do? Because as soon as the monster is hitting someone, that dr and they're in range of that drone, that drone's going to be shielding them automatically. Uh, and then she's obviously got the cloak, but there's another interesting thing she has, which is a nuke gun. It's like this grenade launcher that just makes these, like, mini huge nuke explosions and it's really satisfying she just it's like she doesn't have a huge clip but it does huge damage i think the the official site says it's the highest damaged handheld weapon so it's probably behind the orbital strike or the next gun the, the assault we're going to talk about but sunny packs a punch and is also like really cheery it's kind of delightful sunny has a little bit of robot help torvald the assault is like 60% robot? He's more robot than man. Yeah, he's just like this man torso with sick tattoos and a beard, and he's just like, whatever, I don't even wear armor. Most of me is robot, because I got mauled by a monster real bad. We can rebuild him, but we want him to kill. <laughs> and kill he does. Uh, mortar launchers, these things, sort of, you know, great for engaging at range, but also you can shoot him straight up when the monster's on top of you and just rain down explosions. That's his sort of heavy hitting weapon, mm -hmm. but when he's up close, there's an automatic shotgun. It's really nice. It's got a really good feeling. You hit it once, you blast out all your shotgun shells at once. It feels really good. It nice. does a shit ton of damage, especially if there's like uh, any animals in the area that are coming towards you. You can basically take them down with one click. A little street sweeper action. Yeah. Uh, and also the shotgun, you know, obviously has that spread, but used with Torvald's shrapnel grenade, uh, shrapnel grenade punches holes in the monster. And so 
that combined with the shotgun blast and you're dealing some, some damage. Uh, what I was told was these four are the heaviest damage dealing group so far. So when you pick Slim, Crow, Sunny, and Torvald, you're dealing the most damage so far of any four hunters together. You're packing a big punch and you need it because the new monster, Behemoth, the most armor, the most health of all the monsters we've seen so far. It's like a su super tank frog monster. He's hard to uh, identify. I would say he's got like little lobster look to him as well. Yeah, he's got does. like these yeah. two big claws in which he does damage. But then he just, he has the weirdest mobility. He turns into a ball. He rolls around in this molten ball. And when that ball rolls over you or into you, it does damage. Yes, picks up speed a little bit, especially when you're going downhill. So it kind of seems like a real obvious, like, oh, there's just this giant fire trail to follow the monster, but the behemoth can still be a little elusive if you use your sneak, if you use your mobility. He also has a move called Fissure. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It's basically like he bashes the ground, and anything in its path shoots up with kind of like fiery hot lava. Yeah, it gets damaged, and that also, uh, regardless of what sort of level you're on, I think, so if you hit it into a wall and people are on top of that platform, Fissure's gonna go through it, it's still gonna hit damage, it's like a little fan attack. This is good for combining with the rock wall, which is a really interesting ability, because not only does it tr can it trap hunters close to you, so you can punish them, but it can separate hunters from the rest of the pack, so you can focus on one, and it can also just straight up block them from following you, so you can make an escape. In addition, he's got a molten lava bomb, it's just a real area denial kind of thing also, it's just huge lava bombs out and then mini lava bombs bomb out and they kind of persist in the environment so you can make an area really off limits to hunters uh, even more so than say the banshee mines from the kraken because those sort of follow and explode these things persist in one particular place hunters don't want to go there his main area where you want to hit him isn't actually his head it's his stomach you might have noticed those gangly intestines hanging out <laughs> so of his gross. belly button ew he is disgusting so that's actually where you want to shoot him you want to shoot him in the belly right in the tum tum <laughs> that's my weak spot too uh, but <laughs> He crawls around, so it's hard to get there, but that's where you want to shoot him. But the grossest thing about the behemoth and the thing we have to talk about is the tongue grab. Blah. Gross. Blah. What's your tongue grab noise? Blah. That's pretty good. Yeah, the behemoth makes some gross noises, and the tongue grab is this, like, it doesn't look like a frog tongue. It looks like this naughty, icky, you can see it for yourself. Uh, but it grabs a hunter. It's sort of a skill shot like the Wraith's Subduction. It grabs a hunter, but it doesn't, like, whip them and bring them in like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Like, it kind of flicks them towards you, yeah. and they're like, Whoa! Flying through the air. They have time to anticipate the fact that you're waiting for them. Bad news. Bad news, Behemoth. Uh, Mary, four new hunters, one new monster in the DLC. It's coming out on March 31st. Mm -hmm. There's also two maps, I believe, that's coming out along with this. Those are free, going to be available to everybody that's to correct. drop in. Uh, that's one of the things I like about their approach to DLC. The maps are free, the audience is not divided. Even if you don't pay for the monster, you can still fight the monster. And that enhances your experience, gives you some variety. It's a really good decision on their part to make sure that you're not dividing the audience. You're, you're able to play with Sunny or with Crow or Slim. You will see the behemoth and you will fight with him whether or not you give them money. It's an essential way to do DLC now, especially with Evolve. With this, you get a deeper gameplay experience, but you don't have to spend. Also, if you feel like the game is actually changing and taking and continuing to be sort of lively and updated and, and new, just as a player, that's going to keep you interested. I'm personally still playing Evolve matches on the weekends in my spare time, so I'm looking forward to trying out these new hunters and, of course, the big behemoth and just nasty tongue grabbing. He is disgusting. Who are you?